the process of rendering um, and 3D rendering in computer graphics is basically the process of creating 2D images from 3D objects. Now, even if it's a video, it will take that animation and video frame by frame, so you still have 2D images, lots and lots of 2D images put together to create the video. To access the rendering setup, you need to um, go to this icon right here, or you can press F11 um, on your keyboard. Now you'll see that um, the renderer is Scanline, which is the default rendering software for 3D Studio Max. Um, there's also some other renderings, uh, rendering software. Basically, Arnold is the one that is integrated into 3D Studio Max, and it, it kind of gives you more realistic results than Scanline, um, but today we're just going to talk about a scan line so if we go to the renderer settings right here there's a few options um, that we can look through there's mapping which affects the environment maps the reflections um, so basically the textures and materials that we have inside this is the shadows so if this is unticked then that means that the shadows will not be rendered the force wireframe means that it will render all the surfaces as wireframes. This auto reflect refracted mirrors basically ignores any automatic um, reflection or refractions um, just to speed up the rendering for tests. So I'm gonna uh, untick that. Now this, these settings right here, the anti-aliasing, um, basically smooths out the jagged edges. And there's a few filters that let you choose a high quality filter to apply to your rendering. So for example, this one, the Blackman is a sharp um, filter. The Soften is um, a softening filter and that kind of blurs out the edges. So they each do um, kind of different things when rendering and you have to um, try them out and see what looks better for your scene. Now the global super sampling and um, the super samplers here, basically they do a an extra anti-aliasing pass on the materials that you have on the scene. It will give you higher rendering times but it can improve your image quality. So if you want high-res images or very smooth highlights, um, enable this global super sampler. Now if we go back to common parameters this is um, these are basically the output modes so single means just one frame is going to be rendered um, an active segment or a range so an active segment which right now is zero from 100 and range which you can pick for example I won't just from frame 0 to 50 to be rendered. So the area to render, whether I want my whole view or whether I want just a region or to crop um, my view basically. Now this is the output size and I usually like to go for the HDTV video. There's a few other presets here that you can choose from or you can go with a custom one depending on the size of the video that you want. So we can also go to the advice lightning. Right now um, this is not active in our scene but we can choose from light tracer or radiosity. They both come with um, the scan light renderer and the light tracer basically provides soft edged shadows if you have really bright scenes and usually outdoor scenes 
and radiosity provides uh, more accurate lightning, um, more physically accurate lightning. So let's leave um, light traces selected, go back to common. And one more thing, this is the render output. This is where you save um, your files, you name them, um, you select the output of the file. So just to kind of show you how the rendering is going to work, um, I just created a box and applied the material that we used before and added two omni lights and a skylight. So all that we have to do is to go back into the render setup and press render. Okay, um, I'm going to put single output, so I'm just going to need one frame. And this is basically um, my rendered scene. Of course, there's lots of stuff that um, can be improved. Um, let's, for example, choose a soften anti-aliasing, go for adaptive Helton. And let's render. And you see, this is the rendering process. Usually when you have uh, multiple frames, it's gonna let you know how much time it remains until the rendering is done, um, how much time it takes for one frame to be rendered, and all the other information that we just ticked before. And if you can, you can already see the effect that the anti-aliasing filter that we've chosen um, has. Because it's a softer filter that soften out, softens out those edges, it kind of appears blurred out in comparison to the other filter that we had. So I'm just going to cancel this and choose another one. Let's go for blend. Let's see if we can see a difference. Hmm. I think it did something, but not much. Um, let's go back to area and let's choose adaptive uniform. So that's already looking sharper.